Hey there, my friend. This is Dr. Anthony Balduzzi, and I want to welcome you back to another episode here on the Fit Father Project and the Fit Mother Project podcast. Have you or someone in your life ever been diagnosed with cancer? Unfortunately, the answer for many of us is yes. I know for me, I lost my dad to cancer. He died when he was 42, and that set me on this life trajectory to study health and fitness. And today's special guest, Bill C. Potts, is a man who's gone through cancer. And in fact, he's beat cancer five times times, thyroid cancer, lymphoma, and now he has prostate cancer. And what an incredible man our guest today, Bill, is because he's gone through this cancer journey. He has learned so much about what it's like to both live through and beat cancer, and he shares these incredible lessons that he's learned in his upcoming book called Up for the Fight which is basically a guide for anyone who's going through cancer about how to own your cancer journey, advocate for yourself, survive, and thrive. So in today's episode, I'm basically going to pick Bill's brain for a few minutes on all the things that he's gone through and learned in his cancer journey, stuff that he's doing with his nutrition and his exercise to keep his body vital, how he got through chemotherapy and radiation treatments, deep life lessons that he's learned as he's gone through cancer, lessons about love, about mortality, about his faith walk, and about his new purpose to really serve and spread this message. And I just want to give Bill some mad props and respect. Bill, I hope you do get to listen to this very soon. Um, It's really amazing to be going through some of the most challenging periods of your life and to be able to take that and really just be a lighthouse and to shine so much light and guidance and love and strength out into the world and to take something hard and turn it into something beautiful in service. That's what you're doing right now. And so if you're someone out there who is you know interested in cancer because it's something that's affected you or your family, this is a conversation for you. If you're a person who is perfectly healthy and doesn't have any cancer in your family, listen to the words of a man who's been close to death for many years and now is really thriving and what he's learned about what's important in life. I think there's many lessons in this conversation. So without further ado, let's get into our episode today with Bill C. Potts, author of Up for the Fight, his upcoming cancer book. All right, Bill, welcome officially to the Fit Father Project and Fit Mother Project podcast, my friend. I'm super happy to have you here. Oh, it's an honor to be on your show and great work that you're doing. Thanks so much. And this is going to be a fun conversation because you are a man who's gone through some tremendous adversity and you're a a true fighter. I mean, for those that were able to listen to the intro of this podcast um, and are now tuning in, you have beat cancer five times. You're on number six with cancer and you're an Ironman triathlete. You're a father, a husband, and now a man on a mission to help people go through this, this tremendous journey of like what happens when you have cancer? How do you keep your body healthy? How do you heal from this? What is the process and the journey like? So please take us through a brief history of your life experience. Like I'd love to hear like some snapshots of, of kind of what happened in your life when you first got diagnosed and then what the progression has been like. Yeah, thank you. And uh, yeah, I started 2002, went to my primary care physician. He looked at me and said, there's something on your thyroid that turned out to be thyroid cancer. I had it completely removed, the thyroid, and went through radiation treatment. And I thought I was done with the cancer journey, doctor. And and in 2008, was diagnosed with stage 3 lymphoma. And so I went through a treatment then. I actually turned down the treatment that MD Anderson had prescribed uh, the chemotherapy treatment because I didn't want to lose my hair. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, by then I become kind of an expert at advocating for myself. And so they came up with back then, uh, nobody had heard of called immunotherapy. And so in 2008, I went through that and that was successful. The lymphoma came back again in 2014, again in 2019, and then, uh, prostate cancer in July of 2020, September, 2020, a lymphoma again. And so I'm uh, just uh, a little over a year in official remission with my uh, uh, latest lymphoma diagnosis. Well, congratulations about that. And I mean, it, what's, what strikes me right now as you're sharing that is just your, your energy and your disposition is positive. Mm-hmm. Like you are a positive, strong, fulfilled being that is very clear just from how you carry yourself. Was it always like that? Like what happened with that first initial cancer diagnosis? I think a lot of people might be interested whether they've had a cancer diagnosis or a family member. I'd like to hear about your journey of kind of like the inner healing as you've gone through this. What was your mental and emotional state like when you first got the thyroid cancer diagnosis? Yeah, I was completely shocked as most people are, right? You get kind of numb 
Uh, you have the inability to think. You're super stressed. You want everything to go at the speed of sound. Nothing's more important than getting these appointments done and getting these things checked out and getting it handled. So I think I was fairly typical cancer patient back on number one. And uh, it's, it's, it's a panic state, which isn't super helpful. Uh, but by the time I got to cancer number two, I learned a lot of key lessons from number one, which is deep breath, uh, you know, hit the pause clause, don't panic, don't tell many people because you got to get your hands around this whole thing and your head around this whole thing yourself. And then also to make sure that you uh, line up the right care team and uh, you start then setting your priorities, uh, you know, pretty clearly uh, around the cancer journey. So uh, it, uh, 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 number one was vastly different than number two because of what I've learned about how to manage my own journey. Mm -hmm. And that helped me also then on the mental and emotional side because when you own your own journey, you feel uh, a, a more, I would say, honestly, you feel more confident because it's you owning it and that gives you a better attitude as you go through it. What does it mean to own your own cancer journey as opposed to like, what would it look like for people going through cancer who are not owning their journey? Yeah, a lot of folks, what they do, which is which is is fairly common, is they let the medical care team really run the race for them and indicate what they uh, need to do. And you just listen to them and you accept what they do. Owning your own journey means that you need to be on top of every aspect of the journey yourself. And so when I went into... MD Anderson in 2008 with the stage three lymphoma, I knew what the treatment protocols could be. I had done my homework. Therefore, I knew to ask for something different, which turned out to be a clinical trial. Uh, I, I manage it continually with all my care teams. I'm communicating with them. I come prepared with uh, lists of questions and homework, and I go through that with them. I build relationships with the care team so they know who I am. And they, I found that they respond really well to a patient that really owns every aspect of their own journey. They like an educated patient. They like one that's asking them questions. They don't mind to be challenged, do it all respectfully. And it's turned out to be, I think, really the difference between life and death. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, clearly you're still here after having gone yeah. through cancer so many times. And mm -hmm. that education and ownership piece, I think, will really relate to people listening. Insofar as you look to improve your health and fitness and lose some weight, it's education and ownership from the day one there. And this is just is. A, an even more in, intense and like life on the line need to very get serious about learning. So did you have a scientific background when you when you came into like learning about cancer and some of these therapies? Like, like imagine it could be overwhelming for some people. How'd you go about the process? of starting to learn about your immune system and different therapies and stuff like that? Yeah, uh, I did not have a scientific background, so I was really uh, having to start from scratch. But there's a, a couple great resources that I was using. I'm very careful not just to Google, mm -hmm. you know, uh, about my particular type of cancer. But what I will do is I will go to, for example, the blood cancer, Leukemia Lymphoma Society has uh, a great resources, American Cancer Society. So I go to those groups that have already vetted all the information that's on their website. So that's number one. So I get information from scientifically you know, authenticated uh, websites, number one. Number two is I ask my care team. Uh, I have literally had my oncologist diagram uh, for me how these drugs are working in my body so that I can really understand it. Um, occasionally, but not too often, I'll talk for, to other patients to try to get an idea of, you know, if I'm going into a new treatment, you know, what was it like for you? I don't do that too much because that can be hard, uh, hard questions to ask and because every patient is different, mm -hmm. but that's kind of how, that's how, I, that, that's, that's how I do it. Okay. So once you have your care team and, and you've learned more and you decide on how you're going to proceed with whatever particular therapies, you've certainly had chemo. Sometimes you had immune therapy. Did you have mm. you had radiation on the thyroid? Is that what they did on the thyroid? Uh, correct. Yeah. Okay. It was actually a pill radiation, iodine-131, okay. same radiation that came out of Chernobyl, which potentially could be the cause for you know my right. other cancers. Right. So, I mean, it's a cascading effect. How, mm. how do you get into the right mental state if you're going through something like chemotherapy or whatever therapy it is? Like, what do you, where does your mind go? How do you go when you're preparing and going into these therapies? How do you suggest people get their mind right as they're going through the actual battle or procedural part of, of the cancer healing? Yeah, that's a big question. I mean, you know, how you the emotional and mental aspect in many cases is much harder than even the physical piece. 
And so I surround myself with a pretty good support group, uh, my, my family and some close friends that I can share things with. I do find it's important on the mental health side to have people that are outside, you know, my close knit family that I can talk with, which uh, you can either do through a therapist, professional therapist, uh, uh, social uh, work help that you can get from your cancer center. Or in my case, it's been the most effective is a, a Facebook group for folks mm-hmm. like me that we can communicate with. So that's the that's the big picture mental piece. As when you're actually going in to get it, uh, I, I I find that I get to the cancer clinic and I'm going to go to the infusion center and and I'm pretty quiet, pretty pensive. Uh, my wife almost has to pull me out of the car to get in there because it's kind of nerve wracking. But once I get out of the car and go through the front door of the cancer center, the way I handle it is I treat it like a job and. And, and when I think of it as my job is to go through this and to heal and get better and live, all of a sudden it, it, it reduces a lot of the anxiety and stress and it's game on. It's like going into the office. I lose the emotion and I just get it going and I, and I get things handled. And that's been a huge, huge difference for me when I treated it like a job. Mm. I'm curious. You know, knowing your professional background, you know, like with actual business work and also with your athletic pursuits, do you feel like you were well equipped having had high executive marketing type positions as well as being a competing Ironman triathlete? Like, did tapping into some of that kind of like fire translate here into this scenario of like walking into game time? 100%. And I think if you tie it into the triathlete piece, uh, there's a lot of similarities for that, which is, you know, set small goals to achieve big goals, celebrate those small goals as you head towards your big goals, chemotherapy being one of them. I mean, my last set was 14 different days over six months. I would count up uh, to get to number seven. Then I would count down till I get to finish and ring the bell. And if you break in these big giant goals into small steps, all of a sudden they seem very achievable and emotionally I'm celebrating each one of those. Yeah. I'm done number one. I'm number two. I'm halfway. Yeah. You know, I've only got three more to the end. And I finish, we ring the bell, and it's a big celebration. And that's super beneficial. So 100%. And I think, too, to answer not just the mindset piece, the physical piece that I've learned, you know, from uh, being an, 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 an active athlete, including an Ironman, is the importance of, of rest, the importance of hydration, and the importance of the diet, uh, the importance of exercise. The, really, I have this unique ability because of all that to really understand my body. As a matter of fact, most of the time, I can call I can call the cancer centers and tell them when the cancer's back before I even have any scans. Yeah, I mean, you're just that in tune as an athlete and from all this experience. I want to get into what what some some things that you believe are really important for keeping yourself now as vital and as strong as possible, knowing that you have a type of lymphoma that will come back at some time and there's prostate cancer involved in the picture. What is your daily routine or important things look like in terms of how you feel your body, what kind of exercise load you're able to like do with your body, how that fluctuates during times of if there's cancer treatment. Just let's let's dive into your routine that you do for health and performance. Yeah. So uh, let's do with the routine that I'm doing now coming out of it, mm-hmm. right? And so uh, I get up every morning, big glass of water, take my thyroid medication, and and then I'm out the door in 30 minutes to go for a run. A run is my therapy. You know, I was off of running for a long time uh, when I was going through the treatment, but now that is what I do. I do it six days a week. I take one day off. Mm -hmm. I'm training for a half marathon. So I have a goal in November and so I'm kind of dialing up the mileage right now. And then I come back and I've got a super healthy breakfast. It's like I read it right from your website, though I am going to go to the Ezekiel bread, by (laughs) the way. Uh, That's a great tip. Uh, So uh, my lunches are healthy. My dinners are healthy. I found that if I'm tired, um, I need to rest. And if I wake up one morning and it just doesn't feel like the right day to run, uh, sometimes, not all the time, I'll just take the day off and, and listen to the body. So that that's the, and I also take time, I do deep breathing every day. Um, and I also make sure I have interests outside of work and outside of exercise, play tennis with my wife, go for bike rides. I've got this amazing dog that I spend time with. And so I try to keep uh, uh, also, uh, you know, uh, help the emotions with those sort of things. Nice. What was it like for your kids and your spouse, like seeing you go through this in this journey? Like, what was it like for them on diagnosis number one 
And how has that progressed and changed to where they're at now with their relationship to you, to cancer, and to this journey that you're all on as a family? That is a fantastic question. When I was diagnosed with number one, they were really young and didn't really understand. So they they literally were uh, three and five years old. They have twins. And so uh, twins that were three and my son was six. So they really haven't known dad any other way. So their entire life that they remember has been me dealing with the cancer battle. So it didn't really clue into them till like number three, in particular number four, and really with number five, what I was dealing with, that this is really life-threatening and they could lose their father. But along the line, what it did as a family is it really brought us closer together. So we value time together, probably every family does, but we really tried to make sure we had that time together as often as we could. Uh, We communicated uh, about the cancer, but not in too much detail. So I, I protected them from what was really happening by just kind of giving cursory answers, you know, yeah, I'm doing fine. Yeah. The chemo was tough. Every now and then they see a glimpse of it. I come back, I cry or whatever, cause I was so beat up, but largely they were insulated. However, now that they're adults, they, they, they understand it completely. And, and it's really been great because I hear from them every day because they value that time with their dad so much, you know, two of them live in Boston. One lives here, but, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing from them, not every day, but almost every day, which is fantastic. They actually wrote a chapter of the book, which gives advice. I, I read you know, it. I read the, what your daughter wrote in yeah, the book. It was, uh, oh, it was special. You. Yeah. I learned a lot from that. And, and, and what, what she was saying is you need to have your own life, mm-hmm. you know, outside of your parent with cancer, because you do, you need that so that you don't get too stressed about it. I learned a lot from what my wife wrote in, in the book as well. Same thing. Have your own interest. Uh, take care of yourself uh, so that you can take ter- care of your spouse. But those lessons, uh, you know, apply uh, kind of across the board. Okay. I want to, I want to ask you like a, I guess a deep question. What is your relationship to your own death been like in this journey? Like, okay. So you get cancer. Were you in your forties when you first were diagnosed with thyroid cancer? Yeah. Yeah. 40, 40, 40, 42 years old. That's when yeah. my dad died of cancer. He was 42. So I, I like, that's a, that's yeah. a, I know it's a very young age. Were you thinking about you? Like, what was your relationship to the idea of your own death and mortality? Was it a possibility? Was it just, I'm going to fight this thing? Did you make peace with it? And how has it changed over time? Yeah, it has changed uh, with the thyroid cancer. I never even thought about dying. Never occurred to me. And, 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 when I got the lymphoma, uh, I didn't really think about it either, even though it was stage three, it had spread a lot. But that changed when I had my first uh, treatment and I had a major reaction uh, to like severe reaction, like uh, like really, really dangerous reaction to the, to the drug I was being given. And that's the first time I'd actually even thought about the dying part. But my relationship with dying has really evolved over the years. You know, look, I, I, I know how much of an outlier I am. And I know every time I go in for chemo, what the risk is. And I know that it's not a slam dunk that I'm going to beat it every time. So it's kind of evolved over the years. My faith has really strengthened up. And uh, I try not to focus on the dying part, but I am very aware of it to the point that I have a just-in-case file for my family, which is if I do die, this is the file to open. I hope you never have to read it, but it lays out all the details that we might not have talked about, how to access my social media, what to do with my stuff, you know, what type of funeral to have. We've already handled up front, uh, going way back, we already handled the legal side, right? We got all that stuff handled. The kids know which lawyer to call. That's all buttoned up because I'm trying to be respectful for them if I do not beat it one of these times that that stuff's already handled. But getting your head around dying is, it's tough. I'm not afraid uh, to die. But boy, you know, I'm fighting as hard as I can not to. I, I had a moment, and the name of the book is up for the fight because in, on September 17th, 2020, I woke up from surgery to move a tumor below my hip for for my uh, latest lymphoma. And, and, and I woke up in a full emotional breakdown in the recovery room. And this is during the pandemic. So it's just me and this nurse, Jen, and she reaches over and holds my hand and says, what's up? And I'm like, I think I'm done. She goes, what do you mean you're done? I said, I don't think I'm up for the fight. I said, I know what's coming. And I think I've had a great life and 
um, pretty good. And she, she, she wheeled in the, uh, the pastor who had, uh, from Mayo who had been with me before the surgery, and we talked through it. And uh, after about an hour, I reconnected with my why, you know, why I wanted to fight, you know, family, friends, uh, uh, work, all these things that I was doing. And at the end of that hour, I was good. I had re- that was kind of like a little a miracle. I, my heart changed, and I, and I was full-fledged ready for the fight. The, the pastor says, Bill, you ought, to, you ought to write a book about this and you know, turn your pain into purpose. And I'm like, okay. And I was lucky enough to find a publisher that would, would help me with yeah, it. Yeah, and I mean, for those who are able to watch this on video, I mean, this is the beautiful book. I'm, I'm, it's, it's about to be released in September, so I have a, one of these nice advanced copies. And I, I'll, give a, I'll give a shout out. This is like such a, an approachable way to like learn a ton about the cancer journey through the different stages and steps you have here. It's a, it's a wonderful book. So I'm, I'm glad that you did have that moment to you know, with, with the pastor that inspired you to, to share and codify this stuff into a book. I want to ask you about this on that related topic. If you could go back, would you change this about your life? Would you wish that you didn't have cancer? Or is this like just a, a, a deeply a part of your spiritual experience here in, in, in as a body and a father? Uh, no, I, I, you know, I, I've pondered this question a lot, and it's the first time I've been asked that question, and it's a great one. Um, the question, the answer is, honestly, because of this book and the ability to turn my experience into uh, helping others go through their journey, like you. Yeah. I mean, what you really are in is a life-saving business. You do every day, and that gives you a, a, a get up and go. Your reason for it is 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 deep. And so... Yes. No, I wouldn't change anything because it's all leading to this point now that I can get this book out and help those in their journey. And not, I'm not underselling it when I say there's things in this book that will help save lives as well, uh, like the work you're doing. So no, I wouldn't change you know, it. I was, I was thinking, I was wondering what you were going to say to that. And I had a feeling that you were going to say you wouldn't change it. Um, and that's very powerful because I mean, it's clear that I don't know exactly what your spirituality is. And I may ask you if that's not too personal, but they like, in many ways, I feel like God is working through all of us. And like, and certainly you are an example here to help people go through a tremendous thing um, through your own life. And it's beautiful. How has your spirituality changed and how has your relationship with, you know, what you, what you believe is, is, uh, is the deeper cut of, of this experience evolved over time? Yeah. Yeah, it's strengthened my faith. I'm a very uh, strong Christian. And uh, as I've gone through this journey, you know, I've prayed a lot to get direction on what to do and put me with the right doctors, put me with the right care team, help me make those right decisions. Uh, you know, obviously a lot of a lot of praying for my family to help them deal with it. You know, obviously during the pandemic, trying to stay away from COVID where my risk of dying was so high while I was going through the treatment, still still mm-hmm. higher than normal. It keep me safe, make good decisions. And uh, yeah, I, I think if I look back to 2002 on the strength of my faith and versus where I am now, it's it's exponentially stronger because I have look, I, I've seen miracles, and I, and I, and I, and I'm and I'm a part of one. And if that doesn't give you uh, a stronger faith, I mean, it just has to. I mean, mm-hmm. I've seen it. I want to ask you: Does as it'll be a pivot question here? There are many different types of cancers, but one thing that is common is the journey of going through cancer. There's things that you can control and things you can't control. And you talk about this in the book, like they're knowing what things you can exert control over. And when you're going through your therapy, you probably can do control over your nutrition, over your sleep, your restoration, your hydration, maybe some of these inputs. What are some advices that you have for people who are going through cancer currently in terms of things to take, stuff to eat, or at least nutritional guidance to help their bodies stay as strong as possible? Yeah, so uh, diet is a super important part of it. And uh, so I had hired a nutritionist to coach me through and laid out for me what foods to eat for my particular side effects, the nausea, the fatigue. Uh, right now, I'm working on my diet to boost my immune system because it's still pretty low from the chemo. So uh, I focus heavily on the diet piece as a way to restore my body and help it to heal, in addition to try to prevent you know, from getting another cancer down the road and to be ready for when it comes. 
but uh, so so that advice is is super good. The advice when you're actually going through the treatment, uh, you know, is you want to you want to listen to your doctors and and do what you can to prevent you know throwing up and getting upset stomachs because you need that nutrition in there. So for the first time, the last time, I started really taking the anti nausea mm-hmm. pills so I wouldn't get sick and. I dialed back significantly, you know, how much I was eating because I was being kind of sedentary. And, um, yeah, it's a lot of green tea, those types of things. Mm-hmm. Ginger, I moved off of, uh, largely moved off of dairy, cut back my red meat, all these things that could help me feel better as I nice. go through it. So I'd love for you to talk about the book in a second and, and, and share some of the, you believe most powerful lessons or insights that for those who haven't read the book, but are very interested in this topic, what are some key lessons and insights from your work that, that you'd like to share? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I define the book. My wife came up with this. This book is like what to expect when you're expecting, Mm -hmm. but for cancer. So it takes you through start to finish and past finish on, on how to deal with this journey. If there's only one thing that people get from the book, it's what we talked about already, which is to own your cancer journey uh, because your life depends on it. Uh, And I think another important part of this book that we haven't talked about really is the business of cancer. Uh, You got some pretty good tips in it as to how to deal with those types of things and where to get help and where to get support. Uh, I do have, I, I do think super helpful is uh, early on when it kind of takes you through when you're diagnosed, what do you do? What are the next steps? What's going to happen? How do you ask for a second opinion? And then even get into the details of types of treatments, you know, what to expect when it happens. Because I didn't know. And this book is a compilation of mistakes, lessons I learned from mistakes I made. But to know what could happen, even though it may not happen, is really helpful mm-hmm. for the patient so that they're not surprised like I've been so many times. Like I had no idea for my first lymphoma treatment that, well, yes, I could have an anaphylaxis reaction and almost die during my first treatment. No idea. I actually went in with my work <laughs> computer, thought I was going to sit there and work. And I'm like, yeah. what the heck, right? So I even have tips in this book about what to wear, what to take, what to do as you go into any of these treatments. And it's been um, hoping people don't uh, read it so they don't make the same mistakes I did. I want to ask a little bit about your mindset. Have you always been a, a, a tough person, someone who could fight and push through? Like, Think back to like when you were very young. Maybe you were in like middle school or as far back as you can remember. Do you feel like you had this essence of a fighting spirit in you there, or is this something you cultivated through life experience? Yeah, I've always been kind of that way. Always been pretty type A. I think for sure it's been cultivated as I go through this battle, uh, for sure, right? Because it gives you another level of focus when you're Mm -hmm. playing for keeps. So, uh, yeah, it's enhanced, but I've always been wired pretty positive. I've always been goal-driven. I've always been hardworking, uh, risk-taking, those types of things. But uh, no, 100%, it's enhanced uh, through okay. this journey. Uh, are there any other, like, um, just general life lessons, um, that you've, that you've gotten that are not necessarily like that are from your experience of going through cancer, but not related to the cancer, anything you've realized about the mind, about stress, about the thinking patterns, um, anything in particular, I, I, what I'm trying to say in too many words is this is obviously an inflection point in your life that is led you to some deep exploration on the inner landscape of your being. What's come out of that? Um, anything you'd like to share having gone through this that are applicable to many different intense life situations, not just cancer? Yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, I think number one is when, when a crisis or, or something big happens in your life, uh, try to slow the game down a little bit, you know, to get your head around it, right? Uh, don't overreact. Uh, don't panic. Number one, you know, we can, and so you can have, so you can try to have a clear head to come up with a solution. But some of the, some of the other big lessons I had, the biggest lesson I had is how I spend my time and how I prior- prioritize what I do in my life. And it's, it's, it's what I don't do that's probably been the most freeing. Uh, the things that, uh, but what I do do, obviously, is spending time with family and friends. And now, not so much because I'm basically isolated, you know, from a lot of people, but still communicating with them via phone and text. But prioritization of my time is super important. I also live in the moment. Uh, I live in today. 
I don't stress the small stuff. I literally don't sweat it. And people are amazed, like, how are you not mad? And I'm like, man, it's small stuff in the, in the scheme of the big picture of life. Um, I do try to make sure I get outside every day and soak up the sun and look at the clouds and, and watch the birds and I can go walk down by the water and, and do those types of things. I, I for sure work harder at my physical health and I for sure work harder on my uh, emotional health. Less time on the computer, less time on social media, uh, more time doing things that add more value to my life. I've also uh, finally learned how to rest and I've learned how to relax a little bit. Um, and I was always go, go, go. And I'm working on it. I'm not that good yet, doctor, but I'm trying to master the art of doing nothing because that's restorative too. Yeah. And what a beautiful answer. I appreciate everything you shared there. And I guess in many ways, my next question was already answered. I was going to ask you, as a man who's gone through cancer, what would you, what life advice would you give to somebody who doesn't have cancer? And it sounds like it's probably a lot of these things, achieving this, this more peaceful state of being, understanding what's important and what's not, cutting things out and, and prioritizing those things that are, adding value and just loving it. So I'm excited for you to continue into your practice of stillness. I, uh, that's going to be wonderful to see what comes out of that. And and uh, what a journey you've been on, truly. Um, you know, I want to say God bless you and your family. And I'm, I'm so appreciative that you're willing to take this next step in terms of energy investment to write a book, to go on the podcast tour. And I know this fills your cup up, but like, what a service to be able to share this experience. And I know someone listening to this has someone in their family with themselves or someone in their family personally going through cancer. And uh, hearing stories like yours give a lot of hope. So I appreciate you a ton, Bill. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate you too. And so in, in closing, um, anything you'd like to share about where people can like find your book and connect with you more deeply, whether it's your websites or, you know, where you'd like to direct people who, who listen to this and either want to give someone in their life help or get help themselves. Yeah, for sure. Uh, go to billcpots.com and then you can pick where you buy the book. It's available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, target.com, independent retailers, those types of things. So it shouldn't be hard to find the book, but if you want to communicate with me, you can do it straight through the website, bill at billcpots.com. I'd love to hear from you. As this book, uh, it gets out in the market, I'm hoping to be able to foster some community on Facebook for folks that are going through similar situations so that they can get the benefit, like I did, of having a group of people with similar situations that we could share best practices with. I love it. And I know our fit fathers and fit mothers listening, many of them are in a powerful Facebook community. So they know how important those things are. Yeah. And I'm excited to see your community mm -hmm. shape up. I mean, well, we are here in this shared experience of life. We go through many similar things together and and we could be good to one another and lift each other up. And, and uh, it's amazing what does happen when you have like-minded people gathered around good core values of, of support, love, kindness, and understanding. Like it's this healing is is all these other different modalities in my opinion. Bill, thank you so much for coming on today. I appreciate you and we'll talk very soon.